you know. Are you concerned about your friend, Terito san? Are you concerned? Oh yeah? I might make my way up there. Maybe. Dana. You see the rainbow. You know. We have reached the pinnacle <laughs> of where we're coming right now. Something. Of something. It is a pinnacle. Can't tell if it's rain coming in or not. Yeah. But there's a rainbow. So I'm a little late in feeding them today, so they uh, decided to start picking my feet. And picking turkeys. Hello, chickens. Be cool now. Yeah, we cool. Oh. This big guy is kind of a bully, but I put him in his place today a little bit, or her. I don't know yet. I think it's a. I think this is a rooster. Oh god! But I'm not positive. All I gotta do if they get a little uppity is grab them by their legs and hold them upside down until they calm down. And then everybody's cool again. And then they stop picking on the other chickens as much. So, just say no. I believe they're telling me it's time to eat. I may have gone to yoga teacher training before uh, feeding them. Day. They're very. You like me to be punctual? You like me to be punctual? Excuse me, please. Okay, don't peck at me, you. You. Don't do that. Hey. All right, all right, all right. Let's just go. Okay, dude, I've got to get to the. You guys got to let me get to the. Excuse me! Ow! Okay, you see this? Jeez. Can you let me? Can you let me? Ah. Okay, we can escape. I really need to clean this place up. It's Becoming an embarrassment. Don't. No, not yet. You know where I feed you? I'm trying to film. Fine, you're eating here today. No, I'm going to show you this one to the other guys that are waiting patiently where I usually feed them. And I'm going to have a bonfire too. It's past time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want me to leave you alone? Fine. And uh, you scared him away. spend a lot of time just out here like watching these guys like little raptors going after the bugs I started just keeping 
food out here just permanently. But they still just go and graze on whatever. You know, it's really fun to observe. Chickens being chickens. They sort of uh, vary on how close they let me get. So let me see if I can sneak in a little bit. Chickens. I haven't tried this before. Too much. Cheek, 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 cheek. He's interested. She. Cheek, 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 cheek. today. I mean, you do have food right there in front of you, and you don't need to get it out of my hand, but it would still be cool. You coming, buddy? Just checking it out. Too much, I think. Wanna come get some? Yeah, not today. Someday. Maybe, if they want. So before I start going to town with the trimmer, um, just wanted to show you guys, well, there's the chickens walking around back there, but particularly these lamb's quarters. Is this a lamb's quarter? This is all pollen. Just fertilizing everything. There are going to be a lot of seeds here for more lamb's quarter. I'm looking at that as a good thing right now. I will be, um, getting the lawn under control a little bit more um, in terms of where I have jungle area and where I have just like lawn like this where I can step on it and roll around with the dog and it's super soft and cushy. I really like the hairy vetch um, clover combo. It's super soft, super nice. I'm gonna be having that take over most of the yard for the next couple years and getting rid of, so I gotta knock down a lot of the lamb's quarter over here, but I'm leaving a lot of it back here and back here just as jungle area for the chickens to hang out in because they seem to enjoy it thoroughly. Um, I have some lamb's quarter in the back that is as tall as my roof and that's, a little bit crazy honestly but um i'm gonna leave a lot of this and collect seeds for planting new plants lamb's quarter i'm gonna try and collect as much purslane as i can because i can use that in some of the landscaping that i'm gonna be doing the permaculture landscaping for a couple clients up in manitou right now um, I have ideas for like 
what can make for an easy lawn situation where they don't have to worry about it. I don't have to mow this. This is just like this. This has been like this all summer. Like I let some areas get kind of dry because some of the weeds get tall enough to the point where um, they block the water flow of the sprinklers. And I just kind of let that go and I, I saw, you know, I wanted to see what would happen. Um, but where it got plenty of water, it's super lush, super cushy, super springy. It gets about this tall at its tallest. Um, and this I might knock down. I could bring a trimmer out here, but I don't need to. It's soft. I can just whew, whew, land in it. It's really fantastic. Um, but a lot of work to do before next year. A lot of work to do before next year that I need to get working on. I got a bonfire I need to have. I got all this cardboard that I got to burn. Uh, try and get rid of as much of the plastic as humanly possible, like the tape and any of the styrofoam. I take it out of there because I don't want that leaching out into the surrounding soil, but I do want the ash leaching out, getting rained on and becoming part of the soil. That is something that I want. So, yeah, a lot of work to do. I plan on... So I have an air creep machine on the way, which if you don't know what that is, I can post a link in the detail. I will post a link in the details of this video. I'm gonna make like probably a pool situation over here with it, like, a, like an outdoor pond slash beach area that I don't mind so much if the tree roots sort of start to penetrate the aircrete eventually. Like I kind of, I want it to act as a, like a moon well. Like you, if I keep it full, I direct maybe some of the roof water, maybe the roof water, I don't know. I'll direct, I'll find some way to direct more water into it so I'm not always having to fill it. But I'm going to have fish in it. I'm going to have sand on the bottom. It's going to be just a little personal beach in my yard made out of aircrete. So, and we'll see how that works out. I genuinely have no idea. I haven't really done the homework on that, but pool area over here. And then maybe a, a dome uh, greenhouse over here somewhere, depending on how high I want it to be and what's going on with the wire situation, whether or not I can change the wire situation. But a dome greenhouse with a with a fruit tree that is in the ground, but also like several water containing aircrete structures within it for guppy breeding, for keeping fish over the winter inside the greenhouse. Um, that's sort of where I'm going with it. I have so much work to do. I have so much work to do. And I'm waiting on the air creep machine before I can really get started. I mean, I could start digging over here. I could definitely do that. I could definitely start knocking down the weeds. Like I got plenty I could do, but kind of waiting on the air creep machine for codifying in my mind the plans that I'm making for the yard. And like the goal is to build habitat for humans for animals for bees for butterflies the butterflies have been just swarming this place like not like they used to like i used to see them not before pesticides but there's been a lot of butterflies here in the desert in pueblo and i have flocks of little birds that are just constantly around um i still get aerial predators like swooping overhead and perching in the trees, perching in that tree, perching on that chicken thing right there. But the chickens have not had any issues with them at all. Like they're all still here. They're all still alive. Um, I don't have any issues with like ground predators yet. I do need to get a coop built for them like soon. I have the bricks for it. I just need to do it. 
uh, I'm doing a lot of this stuff myself. So it's kind of, it's difficult to stay caught up and like want to do permaculture when I spend a lot of my work day doing permaculture or irrigation or, you know, stuff like that. So I'm working up the motivation to really get hot on it because I do need to get some stuff done to prepare for the winter and get myself ready for next spring. There's a lot to do and I'll, I'll go over it with you as I go. But the whole goal here is ecosystem, self-contained ecosystem, a pond with fish, that's nitrates, you know, that the plants eat, you know, a, a greenhouse that will stay warm. It's like my own personal summer is what I plan to have throughout the year in my backyard with plants growing with a citrus tree probably or something like maybe a fig something cool something that requires a lot of um moisture because I'm going to have fish in there as well and those fish will be making nitrates all winter and kept warm by the sun and all of these things work together but we get in the way and we try to conquer instead of just working with it. And I'm trying to show people how much easier life can be if you just undo the programming that you have to buy Kentucky bluegrass seeds and put chemical fertilizers on it every year and mow it every week or pay somebody else to mow it every week. You can just not do that. You can do this, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to mow this. Once I get it established, once I get a lot of the lambs quarters out of the areas that I don't want them in, this lawn is gonna be pristine for just playing with the dog, whatever. Whatever I wanna do, having bonfires, doing yoga. Like, this is gonna be my little personal paradise and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do it and it's not that expensive the air creep machine was $150 it uses a 92 pound bag of concrete and some foaming agent to make air creep these things are within reach for the average suburban individual so I'm setting out to prove that me and the chickens who I need to build their coop because they're going to start laying eggs here like if they haven't already I don't know if there's eggs hidden in the forest or not but they're going to be laying soon if they're not yet so I need to get their housing situation figured out I do have a shelter for them this is where we I can neither confirm nor deny we built this shelter for the goats that were here last year that I can neither confirm nor deny we're here last year. So they have a roof besides the doghouse. They do spend time here. Um, I don't see any nesting going on or anything like that. I don't know if chickens make their own nest or if they just use what's around them. Um, but they have a place relatively out of the elements. It's not super weatherproof or anything like that. You can see the sunlight coming through. But uh, I do want to get them a brick. I have all the brick for the winter. And I'll likely set up some sort of lighting situation where I can extend the daylight out just slightly and keep them laying over the winter if I can. I'm not, I haven't decided yet whether or not I want to do that to them or just let them naturally winter. But if I keep them warm enough, I don't think it'd be that big a deal. And I keep them fed enough, I don't think it'd be a big deal. But I also wanted to show you guys, I found back here the other day some like baby tomatoes that I did not plant. I'm trying to remember where they are. These things just came up. I don't know if it was from like a seed of a tomato that I gave to the chickens. I haven't taken care of it at all. I'm going to let them grow. I'm going to collect the seeds or let them 
fall where they are and see what comes up next year. But these baby tomatoes just are here. <laughs> you know, like this stuff is easy if you let it be. If we let it be, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be like, I'm going to be developing seeds that survive in Pueblo and collecting them and making them available to people. That's one of the goals of what I'm doing here. So anyway, that's what's going on. I need to do a lot more work here, but it's coming along even better than I expected in a lot of ways, slowly but surely. <laughs>